Okay, so what I'm doing here is uh, I'm waiting for a call from uh, C. Fausto Cabrera. And uh, once he calls, we're going to do a little conversation um, based on some questions from Matt. Hello, this is a prepaid debit call from an inmate at the Minnesota Department of Corrections, Rush City Correctional Facility. To accept this call, press zero. To re this call is from a correction facility and is subject to monitoring and recording. Thank you for using GTL. Hey, Alec, how's it going? Hey, Chris. Good. Okay, so... So just to just to lay the groundwork here, um, what we're doing is is it's going to be like a video. Uh, so there's I'm being filmed, uh, and then you're on speakerphone, and we're recording this audio just as a way to give people like a little backstory on how the book was made and came together and 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 stuff like that. And so uh, Mac put together these questions for us, and I'm going to read that. The first question here again it says, uh, Sounds good. Alec and Fausto, could you describe a little bit about how this correspondence started out? Fausto, what inspired you to write to Alec? Alec, you must get so many emails. What prompted you to respond to Fausto's message? So, can you, uh, yeah. you start? Yeah, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go first. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I'm an avid, avid reader, so I'm, um, I have Michael Bezet's uh, book, um, and I can't remember, there's two things you should read, there's two you should remember this, or this you should remember, do you mm -hmm. remember the title? I, can't I don't remember, but yeah. Uh, but you had this, so you had this photo of this, it, it looked like a homemade shank, but at the same time, like, I could tell it wasn't like a prison shank, right? Mm -hmm. So, I'm just, you know, sitting, reading these, and I, and I read poetry, I process it pretty slow, so... I mean, it has to be in a matter of weeks, and it's weird thinking back about it now and timelines. So I keep a journal, and I always jot down, you know, art uh, or artists, visual art, anything that catches my eye or inspires me. So I'm sitting with this book for a couple weeks, and, you know, I don't remember the, the events of it, but I'm inspired by the picture, and I, I write, you know, um, all I know about privilege things, because it just reminded me of, you know, what... Um, you know what? What? Uh, well, pr it prompted me because it, it th I thought of the in Stillwater. They have this case of like confiscated shanks, and they put it up in the in the front. So when people come visit or do prison tours, like they show like all these different prison shanks, and almost it's like it, they're showing the ingenuity of violence, right? Right. And they're <laughs> right. using it as a display in a shadow box and. You know, it kind of, it just strikes me as, you know, unrepentant, right? Mm -hmm. And so this picture that you had reminded me of it. And then, it, you know, so I, and then I think, I, I can't remember exactly if it said you were local in the actual book jacket, yeah. but I jotted down your name saying that, you know, you were the photographer. And I was just wondering, like, what possessed you to shoot that or what was interesting, right. you know, uh, you know, that. And I, you know, of course, we talked about it later so and i'm you know i'm sitting in in rush city and in the little backstory you know and i don't want to get too far into it but you know in the loss of my creative community i'm thinking you know what i'm just gonna start reaching out to local people mm -hmm. right like right. In, a, in an effort to to you know have a dialogue with people and there was like a, a sincere connection there too like it was like this picture inspired this poem and you know it hadn't happened yet but further down the road it ends up getting published by waterstone review which is the local journal and one of my dream journals because it connected to mpww so there was all of these interconnections that you know like uh so i have um a friend of mine look you up she sent um a small article i see that you're local um it was just about your Mississippi trip in the, the pictures right. that you did down along the river, and they were just inspiring. They were cool, and you know, I had this sense of connection, um, you know, with photography from art, from visual art. But at the same time, it was inspiring, you know, to see this picture and that a poem came out of it. So I figured that, you know, shoot in the dark and, and write to you. And yeah, and I'm curious about that too. And I think we've never talked about it either. Like, what prompted you to even respond to that? Yeah, you know, sure. I'm really surprised they did. Well, yeah, and I think, uh, I mean, first of all, yeah, I get a lot of emails or like a lot of like social media messages, um, but mail is much more infrequent. And 
and it, like because you know most people don't write letters anymore so it was it was a physical letter and then it came from a prison of course um and i don't i've never received a letter from prison and like with the prison envelope um and it's it's funny because like someone recently sent me like two or three different interviews that i've done in the last whatever 15 years in which i've talked about like well maybe someday i'll do a project on prison or like i'm so fascinated by <laughs> incarceration or, like whatever it is um so so it definitely like called out to me um but I, you know, I think I, I came into it with a bias. Of course, it's like, uh, you know, I, you know, you just don't expect to have like this very high level conversation. Sorry if that sounds inappropriate, but it was just yeah, like, no, no, I get it. You I know, like, it. and so like very quickly, it was, it was also clear that you're like, uh, not only, you know, not only like a really sophisticated writer, but you have all these cultural references, et cetera. Oh, I'm sorry about that. That's like my other line. Uh, so yeah, so it was just intriguing and I had no idea where it would take me, but um, yeah, there you go. So yeah, it's funny you say that too, because I kind of was, you know, and, and to add another layer, like back in my, you know, there's this weird, you know, you just follow these impulses, right? Yeah. You talk about this, right? that thread that, you know, that, that, uh, faint connection in those threads that kind of wrap around things, uh, you know, and it's not, it's non concentric, right? Like you think like, you know, this isn't a normal thing. So part of me too is thinking like, okay, well, you know, what I have to offer is this kind of unique experience. Like who gets snail mail anymore? You exactly. Know? What I was thinking, like, you know, it's kind of like, I, I was kind of banking on that too. Like, to <laughs> well, you know, maybe this would be interesting, you know, to him too. So absolutely. It, no, absolutely. It, it's one of them weird things. So yeah. yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, no. So that and it kind of ties in the next question because it says, uh so it says at one point in your conversation, Fausto, you describe how how quote creativity boils down to the ability to find the connecting threads of contradicting or otherwise separate ideas or things, unquote. Could you could you both describe a little how that relates to both of your artistic practices? Uh, and Alec, do you agree? Fausto, could you expand? So could you talk about that? That because we this came up really early on, like serendipity and uh, and these yeah. co these connecting threads. Yeah, you want to start on that one? Yeah, no, no, you go for it. You go for it. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, it's one of the things like I feel like it's really easy for me to sit in here and my whole worldview is right now it's boiled down to like the dish dish network, like TV, right? So right. that basic cable that we, we buy through our phone profits. So it's not taxpayer money. Like most of the things that we have that are considered privileges are, you know, stuff that we pay for. Right. And we've mm. talked about the, yep. you know, the cost of communication and all this stuff. So my artistic, um, connection is through television so it's a little skewed right right and, um i go out of my way and you know I, I buy a subscription to journals you know so i'm engaged in poetry i'm in this writing thing and now being in rush city i'm kind of cut off from my visual art uh because in the art room we had a full-time you know uh, like i was running the art room for you know going on 10 years now so it was almost like an engaging experience where i could I had access to, you know, the latest art news, the um, artists and writers, magazines, mm -hmm. and I had all this influx of, of, of uh, content. Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. And then, um, so being here, it's almost like I had to, um, I had to really make an effort to stay connected to something, right? Or the sense where uh, it's almost like sensory deprivation over here in your city because they don't have the art programs that still want to have. They don't have the conversations. So for me, it's almost like following these impulses, like what attracts your eye. And, and mm. we talked about this to a point to where, um, like, you don't know what's calling you. Like, I, I think about your train, you know, uh, the, the, the thing that you were saying about Lincoln's train, you oh, yeah. know, how you follow that thread and that, you know, you just kind of um, jump to it and see what happens. And for me, that's, you know, I, I'm so, 
um, limited in content. Like I can't just, you know, search the internet. So I jot down, I take these notes and I'm looking for things that just, you know, interest me and try to connect to them. And, you know, when me and you talk, it's just, it's almost like artist to artist and it's these things that just spark. And, you know, and it's, I was even talking to Hannah about this too, because like he mentioned, you know, some things and, uh, um, like he's the one that kind of put me up on the Robert Hayden collection, right? Uh-huh. That in turn, you know, came full circle when, you know, we referenced the diver because you had said that about, you know, feeling like, you know, you're at the bottom of an ocean in one of those old school, you know, diving suits. So right, it's like right. you have all these weird little connections that just, you know, and it, and it becomes serendipity, but it also becomes like the effort of the artist, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you hang around, you know, artistic people, you're going to be inspired. You're going to be, you know, drawn into that, uh, that otherworldly conversation or like, you're, you know, you reference Paris Review. Like, I don't know, you're probably one of the few people that even know what the Paris Review is. You know, like, and it's like, you know, being in close proximity with this creativity and this inspiration. I mean, to me, it's just, it's easy that these, um, these threads just become apparent, apparent because you're, you know, you're sensitive to them too, right? Like you're aware right. of them and you're looking for them. But what, you know, and, and yeah. I, I mean, what's interesting to me, though, is that you're that you are able to make these connections and find these threads with such limited resources, because of, like I'm very aware of how my own creative development almost ran parallel to the Internet. So uh, and that like explosion of information. And then, you know, and then I have not only do I have access to the Internet, but like libraries and books and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. and you're so limited in that, but, but you also retain it in a different way. Cause like they're like right, right there in conversation, you referenced like three different things that I said that I've like forgotten about practically, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so like <laughs> yeah, right. you, you have a different kind of, you process. I mean, that's one of the things I really enjoy about our conversation is the way you hold on to information and process it, uh, yeah. in, in a different way. But I'm, yeah, I mean, even that word surfing, like that, to me, that's the ideal way to work. Um, yeah. is the, but it it almost like implicit in that is a, a kind of freedom, right? To like, to like yeah. ride a wave. Um, and so I, I think it's just, it's, it's pretty remarkable that you're able to do that given the circumstances. I don't know. Well, and I wonder too, and recently I've been thinking about this even more, but I wonder if it's, if that's not the gift attached to the curse, you know, and, and mm. I'm thinking, and I'm just wondering this, like, what's going to happen when I do get out and am I going to be hit with a tsunami of just, because uh, here it's like, it's almost like I don't have a really a set, like, um, you know, I don't have all the distractions or like all the content to get lost in. Know, like here like it's almost like these threads are limited and therefore you know it's easy maybe or for me to see them or not get distracted by the other ones you know or you know could you imagine not having the internet and well you're only limited to the certain stream so you're able to latch on to these things a little bit easier so i'm wondering if it's not and i, and I know you said this too to a degree like at, to what point has you know prison or the lack thereof or yeah you know, deprivation uh, molded my artistic, you know, process. So I think it, I think that's huge. You know, that's a big thing. It um, is. It is, and I when think. It comes to content. Yeah, and I think one. You know, and we've talked about this, but I think one of the ways of developing your voice is through limitation. It's like your interest. Right. You know, you discover this book of poetry and this musician, and you mash together these influences. And I do think it is a problem in the larger world now, like especially kids coming up where they, they just have access yeah. to absolutely everything. So it's, it's, it's overload, it, yeah, it's overload and it's hard to go deep in something, you know? Um, sure. So I don't know when you get out, I mean, I'm sure like, yeah, the friend <laughs> at first it's going to be like, Oh my God, I can't imagine. <laughs> right. But uh, well, I joke about having to binge, binge watch for months. You know, <laughs> exactly. and, I so much, and I think about the YouTube and I, so I just start getting crazy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and for me, it's, it's less like, for me, my problem is like these systems of production. So like, whereas I'm still water, I could go up to the art room and just... You have one minute remaining. Oof. Um, in Stillwater, I can, and you're good for a callback, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, in Stillwater, so I could, I could go and, and 
get lost in these, in, in like my, you know, have, have a studio or like I'd have, you know, in here I'm limited to the cell. I have to pull out, you know, my art supplies and set my bathroom up, you know, to paint, you know, that type of deal. It's like, so there's less, it really kills your spirit. So for me, it was easy to connect with writing because there's almost like an efficient, um, more right. of an efficient system in, in play to where I could just sit in my bunk you know, pull out my notebook and, and, and get to it. Whereas out there, I'm looking forward to being able to have access to studios and right. you know, audio equipment. And so I'm going to get, you know, I'm just, lo- I'm going to love this, I, this ability to produce absolutely. at such a higher level. Yeah, Whereas absolutely. here, I'm just kind of just waiting, just geared up, ready to be released out into this crazy world of, yeah. Yeah. All right, but uh, I'll give you a call right back. Do okay. You, well, I'll... Thank you for using GTL. Hello, this is a prepaid debit call from an inmate at the Minnesota Department of Corrections, Rush City Correctional Facility. To accept this call, press zero. Yeah. All right. That's such a great nuance, too, isn't it? Like the whole just the disruption of the woman's voice. And uh, thank you for using it. Isn't that it, great? Like, and it's so, like, can, can they make it faster? I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, okay, so next question. Uh, both of you uh, talk in different ways about art's relationship to escapism. Could you describe a little how you both relate to this? Uh, I mean, I can start. I mean, for myself, obviously, you know, like it has a totally different meaning. Um, but what what's interesting about photography is that I, I, I use it as a form of escapism, but I have to do it in the real world. Um, so like, I, I mean, I would love to be a writer and I would love to like disappear into a novel and create a whole fantasy world. Um, and it, I like, I daydream about that kind of escapism, but in fact, the work that I do, I have to like really go out into the real world and engage with real people, but I'm still like in my head in fantasy land. Um, I don't know. What about you? I, you know, oh, I view it, and I remember, like, the first reference that you sent with the woman, was it Chechnya or something? Oh, or yeah, yeah, right, uh-huh, she, yeah, yeah, Czechoslovakia. Yeah, yeah. talked about just, like, uh, yeah, like, looking and escaping to places, and, and I think that's, um, like, you deal with so many, incarceration deal, comes with so many cliches, right? Yeah. So many built-in assumptions, and for me, you know, I used to get into it with one of my homeboys at Stillwater as we're, you know, bringing the Writers Collective to fruition and, and, and getting into it. Like, he got into a point where he didn't want to write about prison whatsoever. And he wanted mm-hmm. to be this recognized poet, you know, separate from incarceration. And I'd always have to tell him, or we'd always argue about it, like, there's, it's impossible, you can't do that. You know, it's almost mm-hmm. like you have to embrace this place and embrace the environment around you because it's the nuance that people you know find the the most interest in at at this point right and i think about this in terms of my development like i crave the day to where i can put incarceration you know as Mm -hmm. a footnote or you know as as my alma mater you know right right you know graduated from these places (laughs) and they you know they reference them but it's not everything about them right yeah like you see in the the back of the writers are always like, oh, MFA from wherever, but, you know, it's not like, it's not what defines them. And yeah. at this point, it's definitely what defines me. So confronting it and, you know, getting past it is the goal at this point. So breaking out, and, you know, our project, and I know people are going to, you know, find this interesting as a nuance, but it's also like a transcendent though. And I hope that, you know, and my, and my hope is that, um, not even it's not even a hope it's just my faith is in that you know one day we're going to be creating on other levels you know it's just artist to artist and it's not just about you know it's not gimmicky right so yeah yeah. um there's so much and even you know like you were reading the manuscript being seen like i feel like that's the you know that's my prison deal and then i'm gonna move on like whereas in uh like writers like you know Dwayne original uh, yeah uh 
or original Dwayne Betts. Um, but he, you know, he's still, he's engaged. He goes on, he, he becomes a lawyer now. He's the lawyer and, you know, and it's, it is a footnote, but it's still like so much part of him and what his identity has become, right? right. And, and there's this, this, this fear for me of like this tokenism. Like it becomes like, you know, this is what I'm about. And this is all I'm about. You know, so how can I escape that? How can I transfer that? So the escapism does play many different roles. Like I acknowledge it. I confront it. I have to be accountable because what I did, you know, is, is something that's never going to be, you know, I'm never going to, you know, shake that. And, and that's, a, that's a thing that I have to own, you know. Right. There's no escaping that, right? Um, but that's where the conversation should lead, in my opinion. Like, what am I supposed to do? You know, like, what am I supposed to be doing? This? And does this negate the fact that, you know, I'm trying to be an artist, you know, and I'm trying to embody, you know, this next uh, act, or right. this act two, you know, or act three. So, um, yeah. No, I mean, on that, on that topic, though, um, I mean, I already just, you know, just in dealing with putting this book out, I, I already can feel that for you, <laughs> like the, the burden of always, you know, cause even the book itself is, yes, it's a, it's about incarceration in part, but it's just one piece of it. And so much right. more of it is about creativity and, um, and also just like exchange and, um, and that kind of thing. And to have it just, to have everything be boiled down to this one subject, that would be right. would be really i would find it really oppressive um right you know line, yeah. yeah or it's uh i mean and and every you know we talked about this before but like like this thing that i have about the sentence you know like everyone says a sentence about you you know and uh yeah. so yeah. I'm, i don't know what they say about me i'm like the bearded guy from minnesota or whatever it is you know <laughs> yeah. um and that you have this sentence uh and it's just yeah it's got to be annoying um and but it's it's cool that also that like you can't yeah as you say you can't like escape it it's uh yeah, yeah, entirely yeah. so you work your way through it i mean yeah, and, i'm trying to look at it like a trojan horse too right so exactly it, if yeah it, if it's got to be the interesting thing that gets me in the room you know and, and sadly it's based on so much tragedy and so much you know uh atrocity of action when you're young and this kind of cliche of you know a fallen person i mean i get that and i, I accept that you know and it's fine but that's not where the con the conversation starts there and that's fine for me right. you know, like i said it's a short and horse and let's you know let's build on that and let's you know not shy away from it because i think that's where we're going to go in this country you know mm -hmm. uh past all this divisiveness is we're going to get to a point where we are going to have real conversations and, yeah absolutely you know, see where it takes it i'm looking forward to that so. yeah Okay, uh, next question. Could you both talk a little more about how you both relate to nostalgia? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Nostalgia. <laughs> this is like a, this is like a couple hour interview. Right here, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, nostalgia. Well, I know it's I mean, a. You know, for, go ahead. No, no, you go. You go. Well, you know, for me, it's so odd because uh, it, there's such a a split, right? There's such a, a, a pre pre incarceration, post incarceration, and you know, but the first five years was so much different. You know, there were these plateaus that you know I hit. So the first five years was almost like a shot, just adjusting to the system. And now I'm, you know, I'm coming on 18 years in, and honestly, I really can't remember a lot of, you know, my, uh, you know, pre incarceration. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot of. You know post-traumatic stress to where you know you're just dealing with the shock of um of moving into this whole new environment this whole new life you know there's also the uh you know the reverberation of you know what you've done and trying to cope on a personal level with that how do you deal with that how do you confront that you know you are wearing this huge title of you know murder and i know um Earlier when I came in, one of my buddies gave an interview with Star Tribune about the double bucking of Stillwater, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember reading that article before I got to Stillwater, and this is before I even knew him, and they said his name, and right after it, it said murder, right? Mm -hmm. 
So that was his, <laughs> that was his, you know, the distinct sentence, right? Right, yeah. So carrying that and dealing with that, you know, there's one, you know, societal aspect to it, but there's a real personal aspect to that, right? Like you really have to confront mm-hmm. the fact that, you know, you're responsible for that. So, um, like for me, that wiped a lot of memory, a lot of nostalgia, a lot of that stuff got wiped away right away. And it's funny because our project kind of brought a lot of that back. So, them, you know, pictures of me as a younger man or right. especially the one with the art on the wall. That really, mm. you know, threw me for a loop because it was almost like it was a it was a reminder that I'm in kind of a arrested development spaces mm. to where like a lot of that stuff on the wall was, you know, I was hanging on to through my incarceration, you know, pictures of women, um, you know, mm-hmm. the, the drawings, the same iconography that, um, yeah. you know, I grew up in the prison, like what I draw, you know, the tattoo designs, all that stuff, you know, the masculinity of it. So, um, yeah, so the nostalgia of that was, it was crazy. It was huge. But, and, you know, and, um, when you talk about the right. before and after, you know, incarceration, um, I mean, two things come to mind. One is like, I think about almost like the immigrant experience of like someone who grew up in, you know, like Thailand or something. And then they come over and, and I think often there is this, like this longing for home, even though you didn't, you know, you don't remember it. Um, And I don't have a sense that you have that kind of burning nostalgia in the same way. I could be wrong. Um, But the other thing that comes to mind is just, it's, it's kind of like adolescence. And, and since that's like, you, you were obviously older than, you know, like you weren't (laughs) in puberty or anything, but that like time, but but even for myself, it's like, there's that like time period, 18, 20, whatever it is. And there's kind of like before and after, and it almost seems like two different lifetimes. Um, but do you think back, do you think back or like, hey, well, even just to, you know, nail down a specific, like, what do you think about when you think back of, you know, being 22? Like, yeah, I mean, I, oh, I was like, because I, I mean, at that age, it was the worst time of my life. And so I had no friends. <laughs> it, like, for whatever reason, yeah. college was a nightmare for me socially. Um, and, but it also like totally shaped me as an artist. Um and I actually like, I mean, trauma is a strong word, but it was a ter- such a terrible time in my life, and and so yeah, so it's Im- important to me developmentally, I guess. Um, and it, it really, I do think of this like before and after time time as well. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, which is interesting. I don't think we've ever you know even delved into this point too, because it's like you said about you know that shaping you as an artist it's almost like you had a you know similar experience you know emotionally and, and intellectually and and that to me is you know it's curious as, as far as like you know what forms an artist and what i remember reading early on i remember reading a jim moore interview mm-hmm. uh local poet, yeah, local yeah. poet which i know i know, I know jim he pretty really, well actually yeah. do you really yeah yeah oh, okay. my, oh we got oh yeah that just opened a yeah. whole new layer <laughs> He was one of my like found the founding poets that really shaped you know my voice and the simplicity. How oh, is that right? He had that interview, yeah, and he had that interview when he talked about. I think he was in Arizona with his with his heart broken, and he was in a new place. He was in a new town, a new uh, area, and like he went to this bookstore and he found poetry. And I remember him, you know, and I remember him like laying out like there was you know, three things that make a great poet or something. And it was something like finding yourself in an, you know, an odd environment or, mm. uh, so like if there was like this layer of reinvention or where you had this opportunity to reinvent yourself. And then it was, you know, having a broken heart or having this sense of, you know, brokenness from wherever you were, you know, carrying whatever you were bringing to the past is obviously broken and disheveled, you know, and it was that finding something that spoke to you directly, you know, and, and, that's kind of what propelled you to move on. And Absolutely. I, I, I got to, I'll find the interviewer. Yeah, yeah no, that's can. great. No, that's great. And uh, I don't know yeah. if you know, but his, his wife or his longtime partner is a photographer, like 
like one of the great photographers, um, Joanne Verber. Really? Yeah, no, yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, so he has a oh, long, wow. so he has a real relationship. That's kind of how I know him. But um, wow, that's oh, okay. that's beautiful. Uh, oh, that's that's beautiful. all there. We got to take it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. This is and yeah, this is what it's know. right. This is exactly what our exchange is about. I think is that kind of thing. And then you like, have one minute remaining. Uh, In my clockwork, the DOC. The DOC. Can you do one last one and then we'll just, I'll hit the last question and then we can end it. Is that cool? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. You know, I can do this all night, man. <laughs> all I appreciate right. it. All right. This, this, is, this is what gives my life purpose right here. <laughs> you know, Likewise. Like Likewise. I'm going to go do a thousand push ups. That <laughs> I, that's exactly <laughs> what I was going to do, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you should do that, too. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right, man. All right, Carter. Okay, bye. Thank you for using GTL. Hello, this is a prepaid debit call from An inmate at the Minnesota Department of Correction, Rush City Correctional Facility. To accept this call, press zero. To this call is from a correction facility and is subject to monitoring and recording. Thank you for using GTL. All right. Okay, I'm going to hit you with some heavy questions here. We got two, uh -oh. two, right. two questions left. Uh, okay, so for both of us, uh, what has been the single most important lesson you have learned creatively? That's question number one. That's a terrible question. Come on, Mac. What, is, what are you doing to us? So, come on. You're talking to artists here. You can't, yeah. you can't boil it. It's a, a I know. Life, I know. I know. Legacy lesson question, right? The single I know. most is what? the worst phrase in interview history. Okay. You, you think about it while no, I no, answer. I'm just I'm just no, no, I, I know, I know you are. Well, plus it's cheating because I had a chance to look at the questions. So, yeah, right. so let me let me riff on this, so and then you, could, you can think so about you gotta it. Go for, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I was thinking about it, and and I was thinking back to um, to actually like the first the first project that I did successfully, which is that Mississippi River project, and. Uh -huh. um, and the reason I think it worked is because I had gained the, you know, like, so I had spent years, you know, probably a decade, like developing my skills, you know, learning my voice, all of that stuff, the craft elements of it. Um, and then, but the key, the big key to me was then letting go. It's like, um, it's kind of like I was gripping the steering wheel so tight for all those years. And then it was just yeah. like relaxing. Um, right. And so yeah. for me, like the lesson, and I have to teach myself this over and over again. Like I'm dealing with it because I'm super tight right now. And, yeah. Yeah. And, Definitely. and to like let go and to like not worry about what other people think, to like relax into it. Um, and I just, but it's kind of like telling some, like, you know, when someone says just relax, that, that, that never works. <laughs> so it's, uh, <laughs> right. Stop yeah. thinking, you're overthinking. Stop, yeah. stop to overthink. Oh, okay, yeah, just yeah. stop thinking, right? Oh, okay, I don't yeah, know. you're right. Is that the number yeah, one lesson right. that I've learned? Maybe, but, but I have to keep relearning it, I guess. Um, I don't know, what do you, right. got? What do you got? It, but this better be good, oh, by know, the I, way. No, I, I, that's great. You know, I'm glad you went first, because I, I, I definitely echo that sentiment. And I, you know, I think back to that, I think, uh, I think, um, Colio or, or Paulo Colio had a book, The Warriors of the Light, that I think about when you say that. Because it said something about, I remember a phrase, it said something like, uh, you know, the lessons that keep returning are the, the ones that are, you know, most important because obviously you haven't learned them. Anymore. Right. Or that's, it's, like a, it's almost like a purposeful thing, right? And, uh, you know, I'd echo that. You know, I think, I think, and I think this is what our project hinges on. It's, it's that audacity to believe in yourself enough to just let go. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And it's not even in an arrogant, like, you know, you know, I, I think my stuff's great or 
You know, it's like, uh, and this isn't for any, everybody either, I don't think. Yeah, right? Right, like, yeah, yeah. There's so many people that, right, you really have to invest in the craft and, and love what you're doing and really, you know, see um, uh, see what you're doing in, you know, with passion and affluence and, you know, uh, like you said, you developed your voice. You, you honed your craft, you were in it, right? Mm -hmm. So this isn't one of the things where it's, you know, it's you're a 16-year-old writing in your journal about your dreams because right. you never know, <laughs> you know, what it is. And, and we talk about this all the time about, right. you know, like how you turn your interns. Like, this isn't what you think it is, right? Right. Because you never know, you know, what your dreams and your hopes, you, it's never what you think it is. It's never going to be. But you've invested in your craft and you have to, I think, have that audacity to believe that what is important to you you know, matters, right? Mm -hmm. and, and it's universal. And I think that's what makes great artists. And that's what, you know, I think me personally, I know I always strive for having an open heart, but then finding that connection and finding how this relates to everybody else. It's not just this myopic, uh, you know, selfish show. Uh, look at how cool I am. Look how badass I am. And look at how, you know, cool I do stuff. It's right. this, you know, hey, I'm like you. This is how I'm like you. Come, you know, come listen to what I have to say because it'll make you feel, you know, it'll reflect, you know, what you feel inside. Maybe you can't say or articulate yourself mm. at this point. Mm. So yeah. I think that's, you know, I think that's huge. So I echo that point definitely. Well, it's just that, uh, it's, go ahead. well done. No, I'm just, I'm applauding you on uh, getting out of that question very well. You did an excellent job navigating it. So, I mean, this is the thing is that, like, I've done a lot, I do a lot of interviews, so I have to, like, just find a way out. <laughs> and you, very well done. I feel like I'm rambling. Like, this nope. Is, this is like, I feel like this interview is gone. Like, I feel like I'm... Not at all. Not you know, how do you cut, like, something like this? this is, like, you've done so many I, interviews that you know that they're just going to come chop it up. I, no, not necessarily. No, not necessarily, because this is like a streaming. No? This will be like, I don't know. Whatever. Oh, okay. Don't worry. Don't stress about it. Uh, okay, here's question number two. Uh, yeah, that's another. That's another terrible remark. Just to just to kind of, just to go on what we're saying. Don't stress about it. You're saying this <laughs> often, by the way, too. And this is a terrible. Thing. That's like the last thing I hear. Like, oh, okay, Alex. Thanks. Thanks. I won't stress about it. You're right. I'm overthinking it, or just lighten up. All right, all right, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's true. I mean, it, it's really true. It's like, it, it's actually, uh, I mean, one of the things I learned about interviews is that it's a disaster if I plan for them. And if I right. like, right. or and if I try to sound impressive, or, you know, it's because what people yeah. connect with is just being yeah. real, you know, so right. Anyway, so uh, second question here is, what's the most important thing we've learned from each other? Um, That's a good one. Yeah. You got, an, you, question. you got an answer? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I would say this in terms of, you know, trying to find the spirit of this question, right? Mm -hmm. And I think this is, I think this echoes what we talk about too creative, creatively, right? There's an answer for me, and there's an answer for you, and it's kind of personal, right? Mm -hmm. But what are they really asking us, right? Or what are they really trying to get from us in it? And I think for me in the spirit of this project is that, um, you know, letting go and stop thinking that you're so different than somebody mm -hmm. else. Well, you know, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And even there's a sense of this that, you know, I would say that I see in you sometimes, where right? It's like I feel like, you know, you kind of say, oh, well, you know, maybe I'm not the audience for this that you're thinking of, but you are. You know what I mean? Like, you definitely are, you mm -hmm. know? And this device of nature that people are holding on to is so absurd, right? Totally, and it's, yeah. And, and coming from where I'm from, you know, I acknowledge that I'm kind of a bridge between cultures, right? And you know, I think that's what, you know, makes me, um, you know, who I am, right? Mm -hmm. And it's funny seeing both sides and seeing how similar they are, especially in the sense of, you know, even the, with the extreme, right? So I have like, for a lot of my buddies, like they're, you know, they would be probably labeled white supremacists, right? Like they, they're part of, you know, white gangs and, and mm. uh, like a, a, a negative culture, but they're like my brothers, you know, right. and they don't, it's not, 
it's not what you think it is. And then I right, have, right. you know, even my current cellie now is from Chicago and he didn't grow up around white people and he didn't, you know, so he's got the same mentality as my white friends, you know, this exclusive, like thinking that everybody's so much different than them, you know? Mm. And for me, I think that this, you know, this is what the power of making this project can do is show people that, look, you're not so much different than anybody else. There are people in prison that, you know, bad breaks, you know, that know what's going on, that, you know, change your past. There are people in the suburbs or in these, you know, affluent areas that, you know, feel and, and have the same pains and struggles, you know, and, and even sometimes like, you know, I call this, you know, well, I, you know, I don't have it as bad as you type sentiment, mm -hmm. but, you know, emotionally, you, you know, the darkness is the same, right? right I mean, right, the right. darkness, yeah. it's the darkness and our anxieties tend to mirror each other already. Like, yeah. when you fall in a hole, I'm <laughs> you know, right behind you in that right, hole. Right. You know, and we're both hoping that somebody else is out right. there maybe reaching it. So, you're putting the hand out because, you know, the, the mental health aspects and the, you know, right. the, the creative life. And even, you know, with, you know, uh, with Hannes, and, you know, all these, it's like this, this thing that bind, bonds us and this finding that, you know, it, it, it is important. Now, I don't think that we're going to be able to relate to, you know, maybe everybody, but, Right, this right. community is a lot stronger and a lot tired than people think. You know? Yeah. Wow, that was, that's a super deep answer. Um, kind of reeling from it. <laughs> no, no, really. It's uh, um, because, you know, one of the things, just setting aside our relationship for one second, um, one of the things uh, through photography that I felt over the years is that if I really go out in the world and I really meet different people, I very often have that experience that you're talking about and it could be, you know, it could be um, like a Mormon or, a, you know, or it could be uh, a, or a Muslim, you know, it's just like people from wildly different backgrounds and, and then I, I can have deep connections and, but I've actually been second guessing that like crazy lately because I guess, cause I haven't been out in the world and Right. And I'm like, wow, is everyone evil? <laughs> you know, like, it, 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 have I been, yeah. have I been wrong? Uh, You're right. right. Um, and so. I mean, it's easy to forget when you isolate, right? It's oh, like totally. Forget, yeah. Like, and when you're only right. digesting like media portrayals of people, you know what I mean? Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I think, yeah, no, I say, I think that's a part of it, but it's, um, I mean, the thing that I've learned from you is so specific. It's like, it's somehow it's not that because I don't, it's not, it's not the thing about like, Oh, you're a prisoner and you're actually like, it's, it's more connected to what you were talking about, about the sort of, um, both the creativity and our, our mutual darkness <laughs> at times. I mean, yeah. there, there's a point yeah. in which, you know, when you were writing me, and like really early on and you're like, oh, and I assume you battle with the darkness of depression. And it like, it, it was like, oh my God, like, like it's that obvious. Uh, but somehow it, it was connecting, which I guess is this thing that you, that one can connect with a lot of people on that level. Um, but in, in relationship to creativity as well. So it's like, I don't know, you, you're, you're tapped into that in a way um, that's just super meaningful to me. And I, that, is that something I learned? Not necess, I don't know. Uh, but it's the thing that, uh, I don't know, is, is just so meaningful, I guess, uh, right. is to have right. that connection with someone like that. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's that feeling of not, you know, not being alone, right? Not even in the sense that sometimes that, you know, we, we tend to, you know, assume or, exactly. or uh, sentimentalize, you know, and it's just, uh, yeah. and sometimes it, it's that simple to where you're in a hole and you just need yeah. somebody to look down and be like, hey, man, get the fuck out of that hole. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Let's go do something. Right. Or, you know, whatever. And I think, in there. yeah, and I think so much of like art is about finding some way to not be alone, you know, like an alternative way yeah. to not be alone. Um, and, Absolutely. you know, and so when you listen to a song and you're like, ah, you know, like 
this feeling of like being understood or what have you. So, right. yeah. Right. And I think, you know, I think Full circle to Demi Lovato. I think <laughs> Sorry. Okay, that's when we cue the Demi Lovato music. To, that It comes it's sweeping here. in. <laughs> look, look into her eyes and it's broken back through the phone. Do that cardboard cutout. I wish I had the cardboard cutout with me right now. I would bring her in, but it's in the other room. Well, that's good. I, I, I feel like that's really good. Um, well, man, I appreciate you, man. And this is, you know, this has been a great experience for me. And, and yeah, and this is, man, it's just, it's so great to be connected to, you know, I mean, just be part of, uh, what a privilege. It you is have to, one minute remaining. You know, just what a privilege it is to be an artist, period. You know, right? It's true. And, and Absolutely. Being able to connect with people and it doesn't make life easy, but fuck you. Easy is boring, and who'd want easy anyway, right? Exactly, exactly. All right, my friend. Uh, right, really man, great as usual. You, What's that? I love you. Oh, I love you too, man. Voice. Yeah, I love you too. It's and uh, and I'm gonna I'm Let gonna. Know what's next. Yeah, yeah. No, I'll send you a I'll send you a note soon because I there's more stuff we gotta talk about. So. I did something for the Little Brown Mushroom, too. I'm going to send it out and then with my letter, too. And we'll talk about it once you get it because it's kind of chaotic. So okay. I want to see your take on it and all that. You got it. All right, man. All right. Sounds all good, right. man. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Take care. Tell everybody to say hi. I, I sure will. Okay. Bye-bye.